What's up, everyone? And welcome to TheBeatMajors.net. Today, uh, we're going to talk about uh, how to sample in FL. Uh, of course, we're using FL12 here. Uh, the sample is called One Into One. Um, I forgot who it's by, but we're not going to worry about that. Anyways, so if you don't know how to sample, um, if you're just learning how uh, this is basically the way that we do it, that we've been doing it for years. Um, basically, um, you take a sample, whatever you have, wherever you have it, you click the, this here, which is, which will open Edison, which is here on my screen, go to the floppy disk looking thing and you hit load sample. And then you just pretty much find the sample or wherever the sample is and you find that and you load it in. Um, of course we already have it going. Uh, let's give it a quick listen and just kind of see where we're at or what kind of sample it actually is. All right, uh, not too much going on to in that sample, but the purpose here is just kind of to show you guys how to, like, how to find the, your your loop, how to get it perfect, and then how to um, actually get it across your keys so that you can play with it and, and try different patterns. So, first, I found a loop that I actually liked in there, but uh, let's let's get the loop together, let's get that perfect, and then um, we'll go to the next thing. All right, so we got our, our, our first loop here. Let's let's kind of listen back and make sure that it's on point. Um, basically, what we did was, you, you know, you can count uh, four bars, you can count an eight bar loop. It just needs to be a perfect loop so that when you get ready to chop it, um, everything sounds good without you having to do too much uh, extra. So let's uh, listen to this loop, see how it sounds, and then we're going to throw it in um, into FL and, and get it all chopped up. All right, so that sounds pretty good. That's a, a pretty good loop. Um, now what you're gonna do is you want to, after making sure your loop is good, go here, right click and hit replace. Scroll down and find your fruity slicer, which is here. All right, so now we have the fruity slicer brought up here. Um, Usually what I do is I turn auto dump off, turn auto fit off. I used to turn the d the decrease the, or the decay in this case down, but I'm going to show you a little bit uh, how to give your slices a, a better, better uh, chops and better transitions. But first of all, let's get it in here. So, all right, we've got this pulled up. Our sample loop is good. I'm going to click this here, um, drag that right over that. And now what happens is some people have an MPD or some people have, you know, an MPC hooked up through MIDI or they may have a machine or, or um, Ableton push or whatever the case may be. If you have some type of controller, usually usually uh, standard, it'll have 16 pads. I know a lot of different controllers are doing 12 and 8, but if you have 16 pads, basically that's pretty much four, a four bar loop depending on how long the sample is or it can be an eight bar loop. But 16 chops is usually what is like the norm to keep it at once we have that set you go right over here and you hit that 
with that knife slit with those cuts in there and you hit beat now what's happening here is it's going to cut it on beat Now that, that that's a good chop. So now what happens is if we we can we can we can change the pitch. So this is a perfect uh, chop. Just a quick uh, four bar. Maybe depending, like I said, depending on the speed or how fast you have it or how slow you have it. Um, now, usually what I what we like to do is just kind of normalize it too, so that it's all at one one level. Now everything's at one level. So that's pretty dope. That that's that's pretty much how you chop samples in FL. Um, but as far as this process, we just dragged and dropped, dropped it onto the uh, the fruity slicer here, changed it to sixteen, um, and then we clicked the beat button and it chopped it right on beat. Also, another thing you can do is you know you can go up. You can you can we can go back to eight. Let's go back to eight and we do eight eight chops. So now. So of course you have less keys now. Of course you know you, you gotta hold it a little bit longer. So instead of it being a one bar uh, hit, it's a two bar hit now. So you just gotta kind of have to just play with it. Um, like I said, standard is sixteen. You can set it to however many chops you want, but just to you know keep it perfect, keep it at sixteen or or you know thirty two or or eight. It doesn't matter. However you want to do it. Um, now we said we were gonna talk about the the decay here. This is actually called the this another word for it is fade um, attack is here and then you have fade. So basically fade in, fade out. If, if you don't really understand attack and decay, that's pretty much what they are. That's what purpose they serve. Um, when you hit decay here, when you slide that up. Notice your tail move right here. Notice when I slide that when I slide it back down, it's going to get thicker right in this area. And you see that now when I move it back up, it it it's basically kind of giving a fade at the end. So now when I play my chops, Now, not much of it you can t you can't really tell too much but sometimes certain samples when you're chopping them they'll have just a little crackle or they'll have like a little sound in there that you're like ah that d won't leave that's one way to do it um especially at the beginning you can you know mess with your attack and it just kind of show kind of fades it in so as you can see at the beginning it's a little bit thinner than it was so if i go back down and it's back at zero at, at full and notice all the chops are getting shorter in that area because they're just pretty much fading in uh And that's just one way to get rid of unwanted noise in the beginning of your samples uh, with the attack and decay. Another way um, of doing that without even messing with these, if you want to just keep those at zero, you can you have it here um, in your envelope settings. You have attack, which is ATT. So now when I hit a key, when I have this other way up, it's in now. So you can just kind of use that to. It has kind of a click at the beginning, but when we turn the attack up, but yeah, that's just a quick tip for you guys. Um, of course, you know, when you're doing this, just you know mess with it experiment um you know mess with the pitch turn the pitch up and down try different things and and 
you'll come up with some great ideas. Uh, one we didn't talk about is the time stretch here. This basically allows you to uh, speed the sample up and down. So um, if I turn it up, it's slowing it down, as you can see in this area when I change it. It gives you it gives you the BPM. So you can kind of slow it down, speed it up however you want to. Let's uh it's at 73, so let's go to let's still go to 63. So let's go down 10 10 BP, 10 BPMs. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys liked the video. Hope you got some some good value out of that. Hope you, um, you know, learned something new today. If so, please, please subscribe. Please hit the like button. Um, let us know in the comments if you have any questions or if you want to know anything else. Let us know. Tell us uh, what you're looking for. If you need any information, let us know. And we'll put some more videos out based on what you guys are asking for. Hope you all have a good day. And until next time, peace.